Now, where is my document? Pause and unpause. Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Hope that everyone is having a wonderful afternoon. And welcome, 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 welcome to Jennifer's Perspective. And today, my very special guest, when I say special, this lady is amazing. My guest today is... Sheba Kofi of the Pocono Luxury Pro in Real Estate. Sheila is a realtor, a real estate investor, and a short-term rental operator. Sheila is also a success coach and transformational speaker. She recently did a TED Talk entitled Fear Movement. Sheba was recently an expert panelist on the webinar, Thriving in Uncertainty. She was the co-chair of the training subcommittee for the 2019 NCAA Minneapolis Final Four. Sheena, she Ah, oh, forgive me. <laughs> Sheba is the former publisher of Women Business Minnesota Magazine. She is a two-time recipient of the Minnesota People's Choice Award for the Most Dynamic TV Show Host, and she is the executive producer of a cable game show named Real Experts. Sheba is the author of many published articles and an event host, and Sheba also holds a bachelor of Arts degree in journalism from the University of Minnesota, along with the Masters of Arts degree in sports management from Concordia University. Sheba is involved in many volunteer efforts. She is a member of Mothers of Professional Basketball Players and was formerly board chair of the Women's Foundation of Minnesota. Sheba is a world traveler, basketball mom, and enthusiast, and she loves movies, investing, and lifelong learning. What Sheba is most proud of is being a mother of three professional athletes. Let's welcome Sheba. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's a oh pleasure. Oh my gosh. Wow. You're really accomplished. I thought <laughs> I had my superwoman's cape on, but you, my dear, oh my God, sis, how do you do it all? And <laughs> you have what? Three sons that are athletes that Three children and the oldest two are girls and the youngest is a boy. So they all were professional mm -hmm. athletes simultaneously, but it's two girls and a boy. Yes. Oh my gosh. Now tell me a little bit about your journey and how did you get started on this journey? Because you have such an amazing uh, resume and amazing career. <laughs> Let's start with... <laughs> How did you become a transformational speaker and a TEDx panelist? Oh, my goodness. So that's an interesting story. So how did I become? I'll tell you how my journey to getting to speak at a TED Talk. And you know how you write little things that you want to accomplish and then you put it away and then eventually you go back and find it eventually. And mm -hmm. you, see, you check things off like, wow, I did that, I did that. So anyway, a TED Talk was something that I wanted to do. I mm -hmm. had been in sales for a while and then I pivoted and I went into the school system Mm -hmm. I served as an advisor, and then I was also an advisor outside of the school system with the Women's Foundation of Minnesota advising the CEO, and I was literally, I would like to say, giving back, giving back and helping mm -hmm. to coach the STEP team, and we were literally going to a competition, and one of my colleagues um, got on the same bus that I was on. It was a school bus. We were transporting the students to a competition, 
And there, this school was the venue of a TED Talk in Minnesota. And don't get me wrong, but I believe it was the first time they were going to have a TED Talk in Minnesota. And so she said, we have to get the word out. And you know everybody. So can you get the word out? I was like, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm going to apply too. And so sure enough, I started calling everybody in multiple states, all these speakers that I know that are like drop the mic speakers. Mm -hmm. And I told them all, they all applied and I applied as well. And shockingly, surprisingly, I was selected as one of the speakers. I believe they selected seven speakers out of a hundred and they mm -hmm. selected two students. It was an absolutely amazing opportunity. And, and it was a surprise journey. I did, I had no idea. I didn't see that happen. And they just was including me in as a part of the solution and getting the word out. And I just happened to apply and they were interested in what I was talking about. It was the, um, the whatchamacallit, the theme was dot, dot, dot yet. Like whatever it, whatever it is, hasn't happened yet. And so I wanted to talk about fear in a different way than how we traditionally know fear. And they wanted things that were really different. So it was in alignment with what they were looking for. And it gave me a great opportunity to check something off of my list. Oh my goodness. Now, you're also involved in, let's see, you also the co-chair of the training subcommittee for the NCAA Minneapolis Final Four. How did you get involved with that? So, you know, it, it sounds like we have a theme going on here. It's all about building relationships. <laughs> yes, so, it is. Ab absolutely. And so the final four was going to be held in Minnesota. And, you know, you always know that, you know, light years in advance. And so they mm -hmm. had all of the, um, I don't even know the name of the company, but they had all of the people who were going to be in charge of how everything ran in Minnesota. And that is a huge task because mm -hmm. you have so many people coming in from out of state and you have so many moving parts. And once again, I knew somebody that worked there and she thought you would be great at this. And I was like, and what, what capacity are you thinking I can help in? And they were like, we need to train the volunteers. And it was a lot, it was thousands of volunteers. I was like, all righty then. <laughs> and so the next thing you know, I am involved in, in training all the volunteers for the final four. And the training was so big. The University of Minnesota is huge. It has like 55,000 students. And so uh -huh. we were all in the gym and you're training people in this huge gym on a microphone. It's not the intimate training that you're going to get. Uh -huh maybe at a smaller company, but I was mm -hmm. I got involved as a result of having a relationship with someone who thought I would be fantastic at this particular thing. And that's how that unfolded. Oh my gosh, that sounds exciting. Now you were also, Sheba, you have so many accolades to your name and to you as a person. How did you get involved becoming a TV show host and a cable show host. And okay. <laughs> like, how did you start that? So I have to laugh at that. You know, you are a superwoman and you wear a cape. <laughs> and anytime you want to do something, Jennifer, you go for it. Or you, mm -hmm. it. it's just that simple. We have mm -hmm. that commonality. So this is funny. I had gotten married and I moved overseas and then we had come back from overseas and I desperately always wanted to be on television. I always wanted to be a movie star. Okay. I outed myself. I always <laughs> wanted to be a movie star, but nobody knew that I was breathing or even existed. And so nobody knew, you know, to give me an opportunity. And I really Although it was something I wanted to do, it wasn't something that I thought was really realistic. So I didn't pursue it. So the uh -huh. next best thing was I'm going to be on television. And so I went to college and I majored in broadcast journalism because I thought I wanted to be a newscaster and an anchor mm -hmm. until I realized that uh, news wasn't news unless it was bad news. And, and, mm -hmm. and the way I realized that was I started interning at some of the television stations and it was fun and it, it was exciting. It was in alignment with my personality, but mm -hmm. I had a problem with your house just burned down. And I'm like, Jennifer, your house just burned down. How do you feel? Oh my oh God. My God. How do I yes. feel? Yes. So then that wasn't for me because then I realized news wasn't news unless it was bad news. And I didn't want to be a part of that because it sort of brought me down and it was draining. So I'm like, I like to have fun. 
I'm absolutely in love with movies. I'm a movie enthusiast. Some people might say mm-hmm. I'm a holic or a movie addict or whatever. And <laughs> so I was like, you know what? So what do I do with that? And I decided, you know what? I'm going to create a game show. Nobody was breaking down my door for, you know, any other opportunities. So mm-hmm. I created the opportunity. We had several local cable stations and I went wow. and, I and they said, you can have your own television show, but you have to go through our training classes to be able to use our equipment. You have to get all of the staff and everybody that you need to run your show. And they told me who I would need in terms of the different positions and you make it happen. That's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. We, we six and a half years every week for six and a half years and won some awards and we had a crew that was awesome they were all volunteers and it finally I don't want to say fell apart but we finally ended it when my crew started graduating from high school going Mm -hmm. to college so it was it was a win-win and we had we had professional athletes on we would have teachers on we'd have business people on we'd have all kinds of people from the community. We had one kids edition. It was written up in the paper. It was so much fun. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is awesome. And how long were you on TV? How long did the show run? Six and a half Six and a half years. Yes. Awesome. Oh my God. I'm going to have to really look at, I'm, I'm like I'm six and a half years. It was like, fun. can I pull you up on YouTube? You know what? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, is that was a minute For ago. Real? Everything that you shared about my background was over the course of 20 years. And so mm-hmm. I don't know how much you'll be able to find, but it's definitely out there somewhere. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. Live now, live in the moment. This pandemic has taught me that. Like, do the bucket list stuff now. Yes. (laughs) Like, everything is like now, now, now. Yes, I totally agree. And honestly, I don't like to call it a bucket list. I like to call it a things to do list because bucket list. Things to do list. Check out. I'm like, no, this is a thing to do list. I'm keeping busy and I'm enjoying myself and living, loving, and learning. The things to do list. Now you have what you're a mom of what three girls, two girls and a boy, three children. Awesome. Awesome. And they're all athletes. Yes. 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 How, how did that happen? (laughs) That was by design. So backing up a little bit, when I was a little girl, my brothers were seven and nine years older than me. And Mm -hmm. so I felt like I grew up alone, even though I did. I mean, they were out of the house and in college and those kinds of things. And so I said, if I ever get married, I'm going to have my children close together. So I, so my children would have a different experience than I did. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I got married and we had children two years apart, three children. And so I quickly realized, wow. I have two children in diapers at the same time, which made me fast forward and think, wow, I'm going to have two children in college at the same time. And so I'm like, oh, they're about to play a sport. (laughs) (laughs) And so, so honestly, uh, they're, they're athletic. Mm-hmm. And there were so many reasons to have them involved in sports. When I was younger, I ran track and mm-hmm. I played basketball and it teaches you so many life lessons. It teaches you teamwork and leadership mm-hmm. and communication and discipline and, and work ethic and all of those kinds of things. And it literally made sense. You want your children, or at least I want my children involved in positive things with like-minded people and maintaining a healthy body and a healthy mindset and things of that nature. And they were just, they were athletically gifted, thank goodness. And they gravitated towards it two of mm-hmm. them gravitated towards it and then the other one didn't want to be left out so then she so she she joined the she group. joined yes and they played phenomenally and together the oldest one I believe she won two uh, state championships in high school and she went in on and she played nice. college basketball and then the youngest one won three state championships and then she won went to college and played college basketball free school there's nothing like free school and then the son <laughs> he uh he won one state championship and he went to college there's nothing yeah. like free college because college is phenomenal it's also sometimes cost prohibitive and mm-hmm. then they all had the opportunity to play my oldest daughter uh-huh. who didn't even like basketball mm-hmm. uh, kind of 
gave her no choice. She excelled at it. And then at the Mm -hmm. end of college, she called and she said, mom, would you be mad at me if I go play overseas, if I go play professionally? And I was like, absolutely. First of all, I was like, well, who are you? Because what happened to my daughter? (laughs) And so I said, baby, you did what you had to do. Now you get Mm. to do what you want to do. And so she went and she played in Australia for her first season. And then she went and played in Finland for her next season. Nice. And she got to see the world on somebody else's dime and have some great opportunities and Mm -hmm. relationships and then my youngest daughter she was drafted number five and I think it was a 2017 WNBA draft and that was wow awesome then well finished up the season she's currently playing but they are on break right now fantastic and then um, our son was not drafted, but he went to quite a few camps and he mm-hmm. was liked and he got picked up by the Clippers. And so the, the shocking thing of all of that, it's a major blessing. The shocking thing of all of that, oftentimes my three children would be on different continents or at least different countries. And then um, two of them are in the same state and they, they um, you know, had some coverage about them being in the same city, in the same market. They're, two of them are in LA. And then COVID retired my, my oldest daughter because she was supposed to leave March 28th. I won't forget because it's the day before my birthday. COVID mm-hmm. kind of changed the world around March 15th and she never went. And so after that, then she um, pivoted. She took mm-hmm. a leadership position with Home Depot and now she's coming out with her own clothing line for tall women only. Oh my God. Oh, Fantastic. But they were professional athletes all at the same time. Oh my gosh. You're so, you must be so proud as a mom. I, I am. I am. Come on, not, girl. Not about the athletic piece. I am blessed in that. But I, I love the people who they have become. Yes. They are amazing children and they, they make me proud and make me smile from ear to ear. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Let me tell you something. I'm an aunt and an ex-wife and a stepmom and I'm I'm proud of my siblings and their children. Of I'm, I'm proud of their kids and I'm proud of our children. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can say our children yes. because um, I, I I work Sunday school for like many years, like back in like 95, 96. And then I also volunteered at like PS 332. I never got a chance to have my own baby because of, you know, fibroids. And this is a common thing in what within the black women, well, most women and within the black community. And believe it or not, I ended up having uh, two myomectomies and a hysterectomy. So I never got a chance to do the mommy thing, but I'm Auntie Nene. Yes, I know <laughs> you're a fave. Absolutely. I am Auntie Nana and I'm really good with children. When I say I'm really good with children, they're like, Jennifer, you should have had your own kid. And yeah. I ended up getting divorced like in the middle of the IVF process. It was just another story. (laughs) Save that for another episode. But tell me a little bit about your business. Right now, you are doing, uh, you own your own company. Mm -hmm. And you are a real estate agent. And the name of this company is Pocono. Okay. So, so, so there's two things. What is it? Barry? I'm a realtor. I'm a realtor. You're a real estate. Real estate. Yes. Bayro okay, real okay. estate, I have to tell you, is the absolute best. It is a boutique real estate company. I don't own it. I am a realtor there. A sister mm-hmm. owns it and she is a powerhouse. When I say powerhouse, she's absolutely epic. And she has three locations, two in Pennsylvania, one mm-hmm. in New York, one opening soon in Atlanta, like super pending, you know, pending in the next couple next couple of weeks opening. And then uh, one is coming in 
in Beverly Hills. And so it has been around for maybe 15 years. She has phenomenal agents that do mind blowing things for families. Everyone deserves a home and we will get you in a home. We will hold your hand. We will pray with you. We are getting oh. realtors. And so, it, and you know, honestly, I said, pray with you, really pray for you. I don't mix business and pleasure, mm. but whether you're, whether you're a client of mine, whether you're a seller or whether you're a buyer, I am praying that everything works out in your favor. And I'm going to do everything, absolutely everything in my power to make it work out in your best interest. So whatever it takes, I'm gonna get it done. And so I, what, what we do here and what I do here is every single client I treat like family. I, it's like, I'm taking care of my mom. I'm taking care of my children. I treat you like family and I'm going to do whatever I can for my family to get the best outcome nice. that, they can, that they can imagine and oftentimes better. And I also put myself in my client shoes as well so that, and I feel like, okay, this is my money. I'm going to take care of my money. So, you know, no, I, you know, I treat it like it's my money that I'm spending. So I'm very mindful. This is a huge purchase for you. It may be an emotional purchase for you. And so we're in it together. And I, I, I can't speak for everybody, but that is the, um, the feeling and the sentiment in this brokerage. And our broker expects nothing but the absolute best. And I'm telling you, we deliver. So I'm a little biased, but we will help, clients. We help our <laughs> clients buy. We help uh -huh. clients sell and we help our clients invest. And so that's Bayro Real Estate. And I'm known as the Pocono Luxury Pro. I like to work with first time buyers and anybody who wants to work with me, anybody who feels like they have a dream and I can help them make that dream come true. That's who I want to work with. I do like the luxury market. I like it all. I like I like turning dreams into reality. That's yes. what I want to be known for. And that's what I do. And then simultaneously, my company is Regal Court and Associates. I'm a real estate investor and I specialize in short-term rentals. And so I am providing corporate housing or temporary housing for people who are either relocating or maybe vacationing, or they might be travel nurses, or they might be displaced due to emergency displacement. Like maybe you have a fire in your home, or you might have a flood and you're waiting for insurance to um, do all, complete all the repairs. Then uh -huh. you me and I take care of you and you love it so much. You're like, oh my God, I love this place. And it's just like being home and then you go back to your home. And so that's what I do in terms of real estate investing. So I take care of you, you know, I find you your dream home. If that's what you need, I'll find you your investment property. And when you need a temporary place to stay, I got your back. Awesome. Awesome. Now, do you do commercial or residential? I only do residential for now. And mm -hmm. I always love to stretch, grow and evolve. And so who knows what the future holds. But right now I specialize in residential. Now, can I ask you another question? Uh, what are some of the things that we should know before purchasing a home? So, so, uh, okay. Well, first of all, I would say save some money. <laughs> it always costs a little bit more than what you expected and a little bit more than what you bargained for, but uh -huh. I would say definitely save some money. And mm. then this doesn't apply to everybody, but if you have some credit issues, mm. uh, know what your credit is. And mm. if, if something needs to be addressed then start addressing it early. Mm -hmm. And then also get your financial records in order. And by that I mean make sure your bank statements are accessible accessible make sure you know where your w-2s are if you're self-employed make sure you know where your 1099s are and that type of thing and just have all of those kinds of things handy and then if you're a first-time home buyer there are grants out there for you to help you in your buying process and there mm -hmm. are also first-time home buyer programs that a great agent should be able to tell you about and or if they don't specialize in that that's fine because that's not their lane that they can connect you with a lender who can and so those are some of the things that you need to know before and just recognize that it is a process and then also recognize that this is an emotional sale it's an emotional i don't want to call it a transaction it's an emotional journey you're going to have mm -hmm. a lot of peaks and valleys during this mm -hmm. 
But the, the one of the best things that you should know is you need to know your walk away number. You mm-hmm. need to know your walk away number. And sometimes you're going to make an offer on a property and you're not going to get that property. You know what? That wasn't the property for you. There's mm-hmm. something better for you. Know your walk away number and don't get emotionally involved. It's almost like having a baby. It's almost like being pregnant. Like you're going through this process. Sometimes it's taking a little bit longer than I want it to do. And then sometimes I'm having good days and sometimes I'm having bad days, but we're going to get to the end of this journey. And so that's what oh my goodness. To, mm-hmm. you know. Wait a minute. Now it is an emotional journey for, I guess, for most people. Mm-hmm. Why? Because if it's your first home, most, most people think, oh my God, this is a huge investment. Absolutely. And if you've been in the home for what, uh, say 20, 30 years, yeah. and now you're putting the house up for sale, mm-hmm. or now these emotions and feelings t- attached to that. Absolutely. So Absolutely. you have to handle them like really. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Hopefully you had a tremendous amount of great memories in this home. Yes. Had a whole lot of life lessons in this home. And depending on what happened, you know, people came and people went, maybe you raised children in the home. Maybe you had your parents move in or your siblings or something. Maybe you did a lot of entertaining, you know, there's so many different reasons that you're tied to your home. And when you're selling your home, um, dollars and cents, you want the best price for selling at home, but you're emotionally detaching from that. And you want somebody who's going to take care of your property. You might be a dollar and cents type of person and want to get the best dollar you can, but you also want some kind of peace of mind in the back of your head that the next person is going to take care of the property that you were so attached to as well. And so it is an emotional thing, but it can also be fun. You Once you sell your house, you can upgrade to your next gr- your next dream. You can mm-hmm. move out of state. You can do whatever you want and you could, you know, invest in other, you know, real estate and other investments and those kinds of things. So it's a, it should be a celebratory time, but simultaneously it is emotional. And I recognize that. How do you deal with when you're uh, selling a property and you're say the couple is getting divorced. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's an interesting- A little tact. (laughs) You know, that's an interesting question. So I have not had that issue yet. Every Uh time I've sold a house, it's been a couple that's been married or they're still married or they've been married for a long time. So I am not qualified to answer that question because I have yet to have that experience. But in all things, you have to do it everything professionally. So here's Mm -hmm. the deal. First of all, everybody needs to be on the same page to sell the mm-hmm. home. I mean, both, mm-hmm. both parties need to sign, you know, the agreement for the home to be sold. And the other thing is both parties would need to know that I'm going to work in your best interest. I want you to have the best outcome possible and the best outcome to me. Well, you tell me what that is for, for you, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I'm thinking it's the, the largest dollar amount. And it's also whatever meets your needs. You know, do you need a quick close because you want to be finished or out in 30 days or whatever that is you want the biggest dollar amount or whatever, whatever it is, you tell me what's important to you. I'm going to get it to you. But I haven't had that experience. So I don't know what that's like. And I'm not Mm -hmm. excited about having that experience. But when I do, I will be prepared, giving my best to both so that they can have the best outcome. You just be nice. And then you stay detached from the the personal part of that. Now, what are some things that we should have in order during, before, or after uh, to help the process of purchasing a first home or a second home or an investment home? How do, what things do we need to have in place? Like what ducks in row that we need to Right. Right. So as I mentioned before, you need to have your financials in order. And sometimes people don't like to think about that. And it's not that big of a deal. You do online bank and print off your bank statements. Keep your bank statements for, you know, a year. 
that's probably overkill, but keep all your bank statements, keep all your double W-2s, make sure you have copies of everything. If you mm-hmm. have 1099s, make sure you have that. Address your credit, find out what your credit is. Sometimes there might be a mistake on your credit. Oftentimes mm-hmm. there is. Find that out early because the higher your credit score, the better your interest rate. You might have something on there that's negative that doesn't even belong to you. That's a mistake that's impacting your score. You want to know that before, not when you're you're applying for the loan, but before you apply so you can get someone to help you with that and then you know help you increase your score. The other thing is save money. It always costs more than what you think it, it, it will. And so you can never save enough money. And even though you save some money, that doesn't mean you're going to spend it all, but you want to save as much money as possible because you're going to need money prior to for your down payment. And for all these kinds of things, you have to pay for the inspection and whatever expenses come up. And then on the back end, I don't know if people are paying attention, but like, okay, I got this house. Well, guess what? Now you have moving expenses, unless you're going to have a moving party with all your friends and family. <laughs> you have moving expenses. And then afterwards, you're going to have repairs and you're going to have regular maintenance and those mm-hmm. Things. So save, save, save your money. And so the getting your financials in order and saving your money are the biggest things and safeguarding your credit are the biggest things that you want to take care of prior to. And if you are a first time home buyer, or if you're nervous about the process, you want to talk to an agent, a really good agent that can share with you. There are first time home buyers programs. There are grants that you don't have to pay back that will help you with your down payment that will help you with your closing costs. There are so many things. That what types of grants? So they have, they have, I'm in Pennsylvania. They have um, in a particular county and it could be in multiple counties, but just the county I'm talking about, they have something called a Monroe County grant. And don't quote me, I don't know if it's 10 or $20,000 But whatever it is, it's more money than what you had, as long as you qualify. But the point is, many counties have grants for people who are going to live in that county. Explore that. I mean, who doesn't want free money? If you don't want, if you don't need $10,000 or $20,000, forget about it. But for someone who does, it could be extremely helpful in terms of helping them with the down payment and or closing costs. And then there are other grants with different names that will give you what 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, once again, towards either closing or towards down payment. That is helpful for someone who might be in a cash crunch and just need some help. And even if you didn't need the help, let's just pretend you get the grant and it's 10 or $15,000. Well, the 10 or $15,000 you had saved, you can, you can earmark that for something else now, mm-hmm. just redirect it. And so uh, and it's, it's a win-win between first time home buyers programs, asking lenders. I mean, I hope no lenders are on the call because you can ask <laughs> a lender for lenders credit. They may say no, but the, the answer is no to every question you don't ask. I have had some, some deals closed where I had a phenomenal buyer and they needed a little bit of help. And we asked for, I asked for a lender's credit and we got it. So nice for lender's credit, like everything helps everything. Nice. Helps. If you are renting, you can afford to buy a home and, wow. and you should because equity. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Because if, most if people renting, spend more money in rent exactly. than, they, than they would on a mortgage. Right. So I have a problem with that because if you are renting and if you're renting, you are paying someone else's mortgage. Mm-hmm. If you're paying someone else, else's mortgage and you get no equity out, of, equity out of the deal, why not pay your own mortgage? You know, that's one thing. Some people say, well, I might not have the credit for it. Okay, that's fine. No judgment. Start working on your credit. A good agent can connect you with someone that will help you with that. Or people need to know with a 580 credit score and higher, a 580 credit score will get you into a home. And I don't think a lot of people know that. And so they rent because they think, you know, my credit isn't good enough. If you can get to a 580, you can get into a home. And actually, it may even be cheaper to buy a home than rent. Because a lot of times landlords don't like that 580 score. They want the higher higher credit score because then supposedly according to the score, you're less of a risk for default and that type of thing. So my point is 
get your own, start building equity, start building multiple streams of income and start building financial peace of mind. And once you're building that equity, you could take the equity out of that property and buy another property all while you're doing whatever it is. You know, you're a social worker, you're, you know, a teacher, whatever your profession is, you have that. And then now you have a piece of the American dream and you can make that create passive income for you rather than renting. You're paying for somebody else's dream. Why don't you? Awesome. And then me, particularly, I'm a little biased. I love to make people's dreams come true. So I want to do that. (laughs) I do. It makes me feel good. It feels good to make other people happy, doesn't it? Absolutely. It really does. It really does. We literally roll out the red carpet. When you have a close in here, we have the little red carpet. We have the little... um, the little gate it's not a gate i don't i'm not going to show the camera around but it's the little red carpet that you walk around we give you your keys we're celebrating for you we're excited for you so we like to make dreams come true and then on a personal level my parents have been retired for some time so i like to help them create passive income and then you know you hear this sort of cliche about oh i want to i want to create generational wealth well that i really do want to do because i don't want my children constantly starting over i want to gift them with a building not just one that the three of them share each child have has a building that i gift them with because i'm creating generational wealth and i don't have any grandchildren and i don't want any anytime soon but i want to gift my my future grandchildren with buildings as well and so that we are creating multiple streams um, they do whatever they want to do, but they also have income from other these and property other assets. Yes, from these property other property and land. Absolutely, and they're, they're not they're not building anymore, making anymore. So you better get some while you can. But the thing is, I love nice things, but that doesn't mean I want to spend my money for it. So why not have my assets pay for the nice things that I like? Why don't exactly. I have my asset? pay for more real estate? Why don't I have my asset pay for my car? Why don't I have my assets pay for my luxury vacations? And I'm doing all these things, but I don't have to take money out of my pocket to do it because my assets are paying me to do it, if that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Awesome. Oh my gosh, Sheba. Listen, girl, it's the way that we think. We have to shift our mindset. Yes. I, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> I love that you said that. I believe that one million percent. It's all about our your mindset. Yes. yes. I'm totally with you. Now, any great ideas to build wealth with real estate? And because yes. with that, what you've just given us is to create the process to generational wealth yes. and creating wealth yes. is real estate. You can use real estate to as be. what? As a down payment, as collateral. When you go to the bank, they're going to say, well, what is your net worth? Your That's net right. worth is, and they will look at whatever property that you own, right. whether it's commercial land or anything like that. And that is a great way to start creating generational wealth, not only for you, but for your children and for your grandchildren. Yes, yes. I love the question. And so any great ideas? I'd like to think so. I'm not going to say I originated this idea, but I absolutely love it when I heard it. So just think about this. Let's just think about a young couple, a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Okay. So let's just think about this. The girlfriend buys a fourplex. Okay. Mm -hmm. So She's living in one and then she's renting out the other three. I love that it's house hacking. Uh, and, And so those three other units are paying for the fourth unit. And so the girlfriend is living free. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now her boyfriend, he buys a four unit. He's living in one unit and he's renting out the other three. Once again, those other three are covering the whole rent. So the boyfriend's kind of living free after Mm -hmm. a year of this, they get married. Okay. And then they buy another fourplex. They buy another fourplex. And so now, so there's 12 units. They're living in one. They're getting 11 rents. Those rents are paying for those properties. And they have 
11 streams of income. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh my it God, that sounds get any juicy. Better than that. Yes, Ooh. very juicy. And you just keep on going if you want to. And you think, well, you know what? Maybe I don't have the money for 20% down. No problem. Get with a good realtor or some I know. <laughs> Shiva <laughs> Kofi. That's right. Shiva <laughs> Kofi, call me. And so, and you and you can be connected with the lender. You can get into a property for three and a half percent or yeah, th- three and a half percent down instead of 20%. It depends on your credit, that type of thing. But mm-hmm. there's so many different products that will help you get into a property. There's no excuse not to. And then if you're- little, Exactly. There's no excuse not to. And so- um, the, the thing that you need to know is decide you're going to do it mm-hmm. and do it at now o'clock. What time? Now, now o'clock. o'clock. Exactly. Now o'clock. That's the time to do it. Let's get this thing done. <laughs> Let me see if there's one more question. Now o'clock. Now is the time. Mm-hmm. Now, do you have any parting thoughts for us? So, you know what? Just the thing that I said, you know, decide what you're going to do and do Mm -hmm. it right now and start taking advantage of right now, we have historically low, low, low interest rates. I think it drops to something like two point something percent. I can't even keep up with it because it's so minuscule. It's mind blowing. As a matter of fact, it blew my hair back. That's why I look like (laughs) I don't have it. I have some back here. But it's so amazingly um, low, take advantage of that right now. Uh-huh. So for not everybody, but for many people, you got to decide what's important. But for many people, the most important thing is your monthly payment. So, so I heard quite a few people say, oh, the I'm listening. that, you know, the prices of homes are inflated right now. Forget mm-hmm. about how much they cost. How much is your monthly payment? If you mm-hmm. can get a monthly payment that is comfortable for you, that is what most people care about right now. The monthly payment right now, despite the prices with that low, incredibly low interest rate, you could get more home than what you ever thought possible because the interest awesome. rate is low. And so some people are saying, oh, I'm going to wait until the, uh, you know, the prices come down some. Well, first of all, we don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know when that's going to happen. But even when the prices do come down, whenever that is, the interest rate is going to go up and then that's going to decrease your buying power a little bit. Why not buy when you have the most buying power right now when the interest rates are low? So I would say do it now, do it at now o'clock and do it and take advantage of the, the interest rates at this moment. That's oh my I- gosh. Awesome. 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 Let me tell you something, especially for women. Don't they have something for, uh, I guess right now they and I say now o'clock is the time because the federal government has grants and fundings to help minority business women mm-hmm. along with first time home buyers. Is that correct? So, you know, I know about the first time home buyers programs through the lenders, and that would be a better for the, the lenders that mm-hmm. I know. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm in real estate, so I'm going to stay in my lane. I, so I know locally about different kinds of grants and, and different kinds of things that would serve people. Um, I don't know about the government. And so mm-hmm. I don't want to speculate, but I'm pretty sure you're right. I'm just, that's just not what I know. And, um, but I do know the government does have grants for historically underutilized businesses. They do have grants for women owned businesses and minority owned businesses. And then, then the SBA has that as well. And the reason why I don't want to speak on that is because I haven't Mm -hmm. applied for any of those yet, but that's Mm -hmm. coming soon. But I do know other people who are certified through some of those government programs. And as a matter of fact, uh, one of my friends, um, he's actually a coach and I don't know what other things he does, but I know he did get a $2 million grant from Mm -hmm. the government and I don't know in in what industry, but I know Mm -hmm. those things exist. They just, I haven't applied for them yet, but honestly, that will be happening for me in terms of applying within the next two weeks. Awesome. 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 All right. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, wow. Time. Okay, then. Oh, my God. Sheba Coffee. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you today. It was a pleasure having you on as my guest. And uh, stay tuned, everyone. You can connect with Sheba at uh, Barrio Real Estate at Pocono Luxury Pro. And the phone number is 610-395-3334. And that is located at 3160. What is that? Route 611? Route 611 at Bartonsville, Pennsylvania. Bartonsville, Pennsylvania, 18321. And you can also connect with her on Facebook at Sheba Coffee, you just find Sheba Coffee and the phone number 570-972-7337. And you can shoot me an email as well, Sheba Coffee, my first name and last name at Gmail. And there's one thing I also want to say, and I always encourage people to play the cash flow game. And if you haven't heard of it, it's similar to Monopoly, but it teaches you Uh, about money and how to raise private equity. And so listen, I'm putting a challenge out to people. I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm always looking for people to play with me. And so let's do it. Let's do it. If you are in Pennsylvania, I would love for us to get together and play the cash flow game. So we're laughing. We're having a great time. We're learning about money and how to build private equity. And that is my challenge. If somebody's in Pennsylvania, find me, connect me. Let's play the cash flow flow game. If you need to buy, sell, or invest, I am one of the best. I will take care of you, connect with me, and let me help you turn your dreams into reality. I love that. I love to be a part of people's journey, journey, and I love to celebrate with them and for them. Yes. So if somebody needs that too. And then if you need a short-term rental, let me know because I have some luxury <laughs> short-term rentals as well. Oh my gosh. Awesome. 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 And thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And uh, you can touch bases again with me next week. Same time, same station, Jennifer's Perspective. And uh, connect with me at 201-749-1918 and at https www.jennifergray.org all righty thank you so much and i forgot to mention that sheba is also a member of the pocono chamber of commerce (laughs) and we're always looking for new members new business owners to join the Pocono Chamber of Commerce. And I would love to sit down and have a chat with each and every single one of you. Thank you all for listening. And thanks again, Sheba. Don't go away and we'll touch faces. Okay. Perfect. Thanks for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. And we're on for the cash flow game. We're getting together. We're going to do Yes, that. ma'am. All right. <laughs> all right, right sis. Hold on. And... We are...